Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 9th of May. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, I dived into what is Azure Linux, um, what it is, why it is, and where can we use it today, and some of the directions in which it's heading. On to what's new on the compute side. So static web apps dedicated pricing plan is being retired. So that's end of October, 2025. So this was in preview. It had more staging environments. It had a larger app size. It had more custom domains, but it lacked the globally distributed static content capability. So instead they're focusing on the standard pricing plan. So basically migrate from dedicated to standard uh, before that time. The container registry, so the Azure Container Registry, now has continuous patching in preview. So this feature supports the automatic detection and then remediation of OS level vulnerabilities in the container images you store in Azure Container Registry. So it's doing these regular scans using Trivi and then applying the security fixes using COPA. I pay based on the compute resources that are consumed for the patching activity. And today there is no Windows based image container support. So it's all Linux. On the storage side, so Azure Storage Actions has gone GA. So Azure Storage Actions provide a serverless way, i.e., I only pay for the actual work it's doing that are far more powerful than the free lifecycle management capabilities. So the free lifecycle management capabilities still exist. But as you know, they're really just based around a very small set of types of Azure storage. And it's only really moving between tiers and deleting stuff. So with the Azure storage actions, I can work at a much larger scale. It supports more complexity in the logic, i.e. the different attributes of the storage to make decisions on does it apply to this action. It includes a full range of actions that the different types of storage support, including things like setting immutability. And it works for any blob type. So block, page, append, and if I've turned on the hierarchical namespace, i.e. Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So if you find I've got a larger storage account or I need to be more granular or I need more types of actions, then the Azure Storage Actions uh, will probably be able to meet the requirement where the free lifecycle management uh, does not. Premium SSD V2 is available in new regions. So remember, the whole big deal about the V2 is its sub millisecond latency, but the IOPS and the throughput can be set separate from the amount of capacity. And additionally, that IOPS and throughput can dynamically be changed. So even though it's being used, I can move those IOPS and throughput based on, hey, at different times of the day or the week or the month, maybe I have different requirements. So now they've added a whole bunch of new regions. So US West, UK West, Canada East, Australia Southeast, North Central US, West Central US, Australia Central 2 and Norway West. Uh, all now can use this. And again, it's really aimed at where I need that higher performance storage. Typically it's gonna be databases, big data analytics, but anywhere where I just need that higher performance, that lower latency, but I've not crossed over to that sub half millisecond latency and maybe higher throughput requirements and IOPS that the Ultradisk can support. On the database side, so the database migration service is now available in China North 3. So this lets me migrate to the various Azure SQL offerings now in this region. It is a fully managed service and it really, the whole point is it's a seamless migration from many different sources to the Azure Data Platforms with very minimal downtime. Also, the Neon serverless Postgres is now in GA. So this is a, as the name suggests, a serverless, modern, fully managed Postgres service. And it was developed through a collaboration between Microsoft and Neon. So it makes it really easy to spin up um, and manage these Neon resources all within the Azure portal, and the billing is all part of your Azure invoice, and it integrates with Entra ID for your single sign-on. Cosmos DB for MongoDB Data API is now GA. So this is for the vCore Cosmos DB for MongoDB. And the whole big deal here is now I can use a RESTful interface over HTTP via this data API. So 
instead of having to use regular database drivers and regular database queries and all the work that goes into setting that up, my app, as long as it can talk REST, can just go and interact now with the Cosmos DB for MongoDB. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to get up and running and simplified for the developer to use that service. On the miscellaneous side, so cost management exports are now GA, the enhancements to this. So I can now export in a number of different formats, including CSV, but with GZIP compression, Parquet with snappy compression. It has support for the FinOps open cost and usage specification focus format V1.0. And it's got an expanded data set support. So price sheets, reservation recommendations, reservation details, and reservation transactions can all, all now be exported. GPT-40 real-time API is now available in preview. So for the real-time GPT-40 models, um, I can now use WebRTC, so real-time communication, in addition to WebSocket. So the whole point here is it's a real-time API for speech and audio that's gonna allow for really low latency speech in, speech out, i.e. conversational interactions. So now, hey, if my app is using and it wants to use WebRTC, I can now do that. And then a bit of fun. So the Custo Detective Agency Season 3.0 is gonna be kicking off on June 8th. They even sent me this little Custo um, figure. You can see the little person has a Custo shirt and little Custo base. So it's, they said it's gonna be uh, intense, fast paced and epic. And it's the call of the cyber duty is the season three tagline. So you can go ahead and register, it's free. And if you succeed, you can get added to that Cousteau Detective Agency Hall of Fame. So a bit of fun, but also a great way to go and learn all about Cousteau and just increase those skill sets. And more and more technologies today are using sort of KQL as a core part of how I can interact with them. So that was it. As always, I hope this was useful. Uh, till next video, take care.